Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Sheriff Matt Oller at Audrain County, Missouri. It's a beautiful 75 degree day here. Uh, got a warm breeze, it's kind of windy, so uh, we moved this under roof. Uh, couldn't get it done on the range, the wind was too strong, but we're gonna go out on the range here a little bit. Um, I guess you realized by the title um, that we're gonna talk about uh, a murder. And that was the murder of Sheriff Chalmus Blum, who was the Audrain County Sheriff at one point. So to talk about this cop story, we are gonna have to get uh, into the way, way back machine. And we're gonna go back to 1920. During the general election of 1920, a fellow by the name of Chalmus Blum, B-L-U-M, ran for sheriff here in Audrain County and he won. Uh, he would have taken office January the 1st of uh, 1921. Um, Interesting footnote here in Missouri, uh, prior to 1945 maybe, uh, sheriffs could not succeed themselves uh, in terms of office. So uh, when you were elected, you could serve a term and then you had to leave office. Now you could serve multiple terms, but you could not succeed yourself. So a lot of times being the sheriff uh, in Missouri was a one and done proposition. Now there are instances where people had run for sheriff and they would get elected, they would leave office after their term, and then they would come back uh, a term after uh, the next guy and run again and win. Um, after, I think after World War II or, or during the end of World War II was when Missouri changed the law to where a sheriff could succeed themselves in terms of office. Anyway, um, so Sheriff Blum was a, was a kind of a, an unimposing fellow. Uh, he was a bachelor, which was somewhat uncommon, I think, for the time. Uh, and he was never married, never had any children, and served as the sheriff. And according to most of the family, uh, where stories have been passed down, his nickname was Silent Chow uh, because he was pretty much shy and soft-spoken. And a lot of times, uh, according to the family uh, that's, that's got oral history that's, that's been given to me is, is that uh, many times he didn't even carry a gun. Um, so we fast forward a little bit to February 10th, 1924. It was a Sunday, Sheriff Blum was at his girlfriend's house. He did have a girlfriend or fiance. I'm not really sure which way that broke down uh, and, and I don't think the family's ever given me a solid answer, but he was at a lady friend's house uh, eating dinner, Sunday evening dinner. And at some point through the day, a passenger train had come into the Mexico rail yard and in Mexico, Missouri, which is the county seat, and unloaded passengers. And there was a passenger on the train that got off, apparently went into town and got drunk and came back to the rail yard and began firing a gun. Sheriff Blum was summoned from his dinner and went to the rail yard, approached the van. The man shot and killed Sheriff Blum instantly. He was captured and jailed. Um, so another little interesting footnote is that at the time this happened, uh, the county, Audrain County was building a new jail. Uh, we're on our third one now, but this would have been the second one. Um, and it was a state-of-the-art jail at the time, uh, and fairly large, uh, given, given the, the time that it was built. Uh, I think it held like 20 inmates. And back then, executions of people for, that had been sentenced to death were carried out on the local level. So there was actually a hanging apparatus in that jail. Uh, the, the building still stands, but the cells and all that stuff, unfortunately, were cut out for salvage uh, by some owner that came along and bought it from the county years later, but I did get a chance uh, years ago to go into that building and see the hanging apparatus. It was a trap door with an eye hook above it. Uh, kind of neat. <clears throat> um, so anyway, the man was captured and ironically, there was a change of venue on the murder trial and the man was uh, switched to Montgomery County, Missouri, which is the next county east, and he was tried there, convicted, and hanged there. 
No one was ever hanged uh, after our, our hanging apparatus was built and completed in 1925. So ironic twist of fate that had there not been a change of venue, the man that murdered the sheriff who was overseeing the building of that particular jail would have been hung in that jail. So I knew, oh, by the way, another interesting side note, I almost forgot. So it was really common then, at least in Missouri, uh, if a sheriff died in office or was killed, uh, very common for a family member to be sworn in to finish their term as the sheriff. Uh, there are instances in Missouri where sheriff's wives were sworn in as the sheriff to finish their husband's terms when they were killed or died. Um, just back then, there was no special training needed, no special expertise, no uh, nothing like that. You just put your name on a ballot, you won. If the office became vacant, the county commission would fill the office with whoever they thought was appropriate. And, you know, back then people, you're talking about uh, 1920s, back then people kind of depended on their income uh, much more than they do today. There were no social programs. So if a sheriff died in office, his wife or his children or whatever the case may be, uh, were, were counting on that income at least till the end of the term. So typically a family member was sworn in to finish the term up. So the next day, of course, the headline reads in the paper, sheriff murdered, brother sworn in as sheriff. So Chalmus Blum's brother, Ernest, was sworn in as sheriff and completed Sheriff Blum's term, Chalmus's term. And as far as we know, without incident, never really heard anything. And you'll see pictures of, of Chalmus and Ernest uh, toward the end of this, uh, at the end of this presentation. So we're gonna fast forward now to 2017. When I took office in 2017, um, we started evaluating whether or not it would be feasible to restart our canine program. Our canine program had its last uh, in-service police dog in 2005. So we started, we did an informal study and we looked at the number of times we had called outside agencies for a police dog. We looked at uh, the number of times that <clears throat> deputies had been to calls where a police dog would have been a useful tool and we decided it was feasible to restart our canine program. Now, I knew about Sheriff Blum, and when we selected our new canine in December of 2017, we decided that it would be fitting to name the dog after Sheriff Blum. Uh, so we, we named the dog Chow. Now, I did contact uh, some family members that I knew about prior to doing that to make sure they wouldn't be offended, but I, I felt it was a good way to keep Sheriff Blum's name remembered. Um, after all, it had been, you know, 90 or 89 years at that point. Uh, it had been 89, no, 83 years, something like that. 83 years at that, no, 93 years at that point. My mask bad. <coughs> Excuse me. So after I talked to the family, uh, and we selected our, our police dog. I made a press release. Big deal when you start a canine program up uh, after, you know, roughly 13 years of it being silent. So um, at some point, a couple of weeks, three weeks or so after that, I got a voicemail on my desk phone from a lady that wanted me to call her back and said she was one of Sheriff Blum's, uh, Chalmers Blum's relatives, and she had seen our media release and wanted to talk to me about it. So I called her. And she insisted that we meet in person. And she wanted me to come to her house because there were some things she wanted me to see. And I went there a week or so later, made an appointment with her, went down there, and uh, she had the eulogy from the funeral that was read when Sheriff Blum was buried. She had the list of attendees of the funeral. She had all sorts of documents and photographs from Sheriff Blum's funeral. Um, she was, uh, and as we talked, I found out that she was a retired captain from the Missouri Department of Corrections. And I believe she told me she was the first captain uh, or our first female to ever make captain at the Missouri Department of Corrections, which um, would have been a big feat back then because she was, I believe she was in her 70s back in 2008, early 2018 and she's since passed away. But one of the things that she uh, showed me, she pulled out an old rag. And in this rag, 
She un unwrapped it. Was a Colt police positive chambered in 38 Smith and Wesson. Neat old gun. So <clears throat> long story short, this was Sheriff Chalmers Blum's gun. Now, whether or not um, it was with him at the time he was murdered, I do not know. Uh, but the next day when Ernest Blum was sworn in as sheriff, the gun went to him. The family gave the gun to him. And this is the gun he used to finish out the term. Uh, Ernest Blum died in 1957 at his home here in Mexico. And when the home was cleaned out, the gun was found in a nightstand drawer and uh, was taken by a family member, wrapped in a rag, put in a safe, and all but forgotten for, what, 1957 to 2017, so what is that, 60 years? Uh, all but forgotten for 60 years until uh, the sheriff, the new sheriff, decided to name a police dog after a murdered sheriff, which sparked the family to uh, start thinking about what to do with this gun. So they had contacted the uh, Historical Society here in Audrain County, and the Historical Society would have required that the gun be decommissioned, barrel pinned, firing pin taken out, never to be fired again, uh, in order to be in their museum, and the family refused to do that. Um, so the family got together and talked and decided uh, that they would present this gun to me, and in the hopes that I would uh, put this gun on display in our sheriff's office and keep Sheriff Blum's history alive, and uh, a, a, a tangible piece of history that you can put your hands on from Sheriff Blum's tenure. And I agreed to do that. Uh, oddly enough, here's the six bullets. The, these six bullets were wrapped uh, in the rag with the gun. They were not in the gun, they were just wrapped in the rag. But these were taken out of that gun in 1957 when Ernest died. You can see that the lead is starting to corrode pretty badly. Um, the primers are discolored, a uh, different color, but. Um, you can see this one's got got some funk on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Kind of turning green, as the old-timers called it. But um, this gun is on display in our training room. Uh, we have training. Uh, we host training here. We can seat 50 and, uh, well, 40 comfortably, but 50 if we squeeze. And there are police officers from all over the state of Missouri and all over the United States that come here to, to take training that we sponsor. So... Um, a lot of a lot of cops get to see Sheriff Blum's gun, uh, these bullets, a letter talking about uh, Sheriff Blum and how the sheriff's office came into possession uh, of of this uh, really cool piece of history. So uh, this is one of the cooler things that I have been able to do, I think. But we're going to go out on the range, um, and it's been right at 100 years since Sheriff Blum was murdered. So um, I think it's pretty fitting to, uh, on the 100th anniversary, honor him, uh, remember him, and we're going to go shoot his gun. Um, I, I hunted down, went to my boys at Graf and Sons in Mexico, which is local to me, and hunted down a box of uh, 38 Smith & Wesson, which cost me a pretty penny. It's pretty expensive, but uh, we're going to go run some rounds through this gun, and that way we can clean it back up and put it back in its its display case uh, in its forever home uh, in our training room on display. So um, that being said, I'm going to move the camera out into the wind on the range, and we'll load this thing up and uh, fire some shots through it. We'll see you in a minute. All right, we made our way out to the range. It's a little breezy, but uh, hopefully you guys uh, won't get blasted by the wind. Uh, I'm not gonna hang a paper target today because, again, it's pretty windy. Um, so we're gonna load this thing up and we're gonna uh, shoot that steel a little bit and have a little fun. Here we go. That is so cool. 
the sights on this thing are typical of the era of the 1920s or so in that uh, they're they're really thin and super hard to find so those first couple of shots uh, I normally wear prescription glasses the first couple of shots uh, uh, I missed which you know it's kind of embarrassing when you're uh, when you're this close but uh, those sights are super duper hard to pick up but this was uh, quite a treat uh, for me anyway I don't know about you guys probably not much fun for you but it sure is fun for me So the 38 Smith & Wesson, by today's standards, uh, is fairly anemic. It's, uh, oh, it's about 145 or so grain bullet, probably moving 700-ish maybe feet a second. Uh, not, not necessarily what was considered a, a, a super potent man stopper, but it was good enough uh, for defensive purposes, and a lot of cops carried these guns. So, after at least a hundred years, this gun functions flawlessly, um, nice and tight on the lockup. So we're going to take this back in, we're going to clean it up, and we're going to get it put back in the display case for remembering Sheriff Chalmers Blum. Uh, this is Sheriff Matt Oller at Audrain County, Missouri, signing off. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, have a wonderful day.